Mr. Speaker, our public education efforts will cover both the benefits as well as the risks of nuclear energy. Uh, I've said it many times, while Singapore has not yet made a decision on nuclear energy, a number of countries in the region have already announced plans to adopt nuclear energy within the next decade. Of course, whether they can do it or not, uh, that, that is uh, a function of uh, how the technical aspects will pan out. Now, it's important, therefore, to help the public understand how the advancements in nuclear energy technologies, the deployment of nuclear energy, can now be carried out in a safer way. We also need to educate the public on how including nuclear energy in our energy mix can enhance our energy security, reduce greenhouse gas emissions and ultimately benefit Singaporeans. Now, while the government had ruled out conventional nuclear energy technologies in the 2012 pre-feasibility study, the newer nuclear technologies, such as the small modular reactors and the Generation 4 reactors, incorporate new safety features that can significantly reduce the risks and mitigate the impact of accidents compared to many of the plants operating around the world today. We will also help the public understand the capabilities, first and foremost, that Singapore is building up to enable us to take a considered decision on whether eventually to deploy nuclear energy. And if we should decide to do so, how we will manage this safely. Thank you. I'd like to thank the Minister. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank the Minister for the reply. It appears to me that the question on safety uh, involves uh, two distinct issues. One is Singapore's own decisions insofar as uh, SMR and Gen 4 reactors are concerned, or Gen 4 technology is concerned. And the other question is the regional, uh, the regional rollout of uh, nuclear technologies. So uh, the public education process uh, is, has to address both these issues. Uh, on the matter of uh, uh, announcements made by uh, countries in the region, uh, can the minister confirm uh, what is the extent of that uh, pr uh, progress uh, and is the technology that is being considered by these regional partners of ours uh, of the new generation uh, nuclear technologies or of the old generation technologies? Uh, that aside, uh, the other question, of course, is in terms of the government's plans, uh, specifically in terms of public education. Uh, the paper that I referred to, which was uh, in my PQ, the 2018 paper, which was funded by the Singapore National Research Foundation, suggests that uh, there may be a lot of um, misunderstanding with regard to nuclear technology amongst uh, Singaporeans uh, that has to be overcome. Granted, the sample size was small, just 39, uh, but the suggestion is that there's quite a bit of work to be done on the public education front. I thank Mr. Singh uh, for his supplementary um, questions. Um, it, it has flowed into a, 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 a trend of thought, um, so I would try to, to uh, follow according to the same wavelength and frequency, but uh, in the event that I, I drop a few beats, please uh, 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 sort of uh, give me back uh, some of the points that you're, you're raising. Uh, so first and foremost, perhaps I can sort of uh, provide a glimpse as to what the government is thinking of um, in terms of the setup. So there are, there are two teams today, a team at uh, EMA and one team at NEA. So EMA's nuclear energy office that falls under my portfolio uh, of coverage within the MTI family. So the EMA's nuclear energy office will primarily assess the feasibility of deploying advanced nuclear energy technologies for power generation in Singapore. Now, NEA, the National Environment Agency's Nuclear Safety Division, will focus on nuclear safety and safeguards for potential deployments in Singapore as well as in the region itself. And, you know, I note that uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, interest in the surrounding ASEAN region in terms of their deployment. I cannot uh, commit for sure 
Um, as to their timelines, although they have uh, what we glean are from uh, official public uh, sort of newspaper reports out there, um, there's been some uh, exhortations by our neighbours that they want to develop it in 10 years, some 15, some 20 years. They have not uh, uh, stated what type of technologies they're going to do, they're going to deploy, whether it's conventional ones or whether it's going to be the advanced nuclear um, energy technologies. Now, if it is the advanced nuclear technology type of uh, uh, the newer types like the SMRs, the Gen 4, then I think pretty much um, the assessment level, the readiness level, we are probably on par. But having said that, within the countries in the region, many of them actually have already developed and they have planted research reactors uh, within, within their, their, their respective uh, countries itself. I don't have the total numbers of uh, the research reactors. I suppose there are um, some in Indonesia, in Malaysia, um, I believe uh, in Vietnam, possibly even in the Philippines as well. Now, for us, I think what's important to note is that, as I've said early on in my reply to um, uh, the other MPs in the House. Today, the physics work, the engineering works. I think the last big step is whether it can be commercially viable because the physics, the engineering can work, but if the costs they are so high, they're so prohibitive, then it really would not be pragmatic, feasible, pragmatic, or nor, it, nor would it be practical for us to deploy here. So, hence, that comparison and the undertaking of that, that feasibility study today by Maud McDonnell is it, out there to assess this. Having said this, what we know today is that the advanced nuclear technology is significantly safer than the conventional ones because a lot of the safety systems are passive and they are inherent. They don't need an external active operator to go in and intervene. Uh, the difference between, uh, I mean, the, the public, myself included, um, in the uh, early stages of my, my entry um, in, into government, uh, was also sort of pretty much affected by what we read about in Fukushima, uh, in Chernobyl. But those systems were the first, second generation. They were built many, many decades ago. Um, I think that engineering, the safety design has significantly improved since then. And that's why we're undertaking this feasibility study. So I beg your indulgence. A lot of some of the questions you ask pertaining to our neighbours itself, um, it would be very difficult for us to comment on what they are doing. Uh, we've heard anecdotal announcements uh, that there could be potential need for sightings 500 kilometres south of us. There are also need for more remote areas uh, for, for small modular reactors, for instance, like in Kalimantan or even over in the, in the, in the eastern part of, of uh, Indonesia. We cannot confirm um, what is the state or the level of maturity in terms of their thinking or their discussions. Suffice to say, we work very closely with international agencies the IAEA, for instance, together with the IEA, and with that, we understand from the data and we try to triangulate. But these are very early stages. So, hence, uh, that's why I said, you know, uh, we'll try our best to answer, but a lot of that information is just not out there. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. I, I note the two agencies within the government that Minister Tan mentioned, as well as uh, the recently set up Nuclear Research and Safety Institute within NUS. Uh, notwithstanding how the non-proliferation treaty does not restrict peaceful uses of nuclear technology, I'm wondering if the minister will be able to share what challenges the government has faced uh, in acquiring top-end talent in uh, nuclear science and engineering, given the traditional guardedness that leading nuclear nations have had uh, in disseminating the frontier of such knowledge. I thank uh, Professor Lim for his uh, SQ. The first and foremost, SNRZI uh, was incorporated some time back. Um, I don't have the date offhand with me. 
This year, it was upgraded. It used to be SNRZI. The I was an initiative. Uh, but what um, the agencies have recognised is that because of the, the renewed, I mean, the enhanced interest in advanced nuclear technology, they've decided to upgrade it from an initiative into an institute. Uh, so it, it resides within the NUS itself. Um, it's an independent body, and it does you know, all of the simulation framework, it does a lot of the public education, um, and uh, it continues to, to be so. For the type of technologies that would be suitable for Singapore, we have concluded as a result of that pre-feasibility study in 2012 that um, conventional nuclear technologies would not be possible for us, nor is it even practical nor feasible, because the emergency safety zones means that there's no way in Singapore we can site it. Um, however, the way the newer types of uh, uh, nuclear energy development we have seen offers promise because the buffer zone is significantly reduced and some of these small modular reactors allow for the potential and the possibility of it stacking. So to that end, we look at it with a lot of interest because it could offer potentially if we make that decision and it would take us some years to come to that decision. For us, it is one way of diversifying our energy mix and at the same time, it offers us security. Security in terms of supplies and, and uh, to your earlier uh, colleague's point, uh, Mr. Tiong's point about thorium, we also need to think about the supply chain because today that concentration risk is very, very high. So these are all the factors that we have taken into consideration. The nuclear talent that you, you were alluding to, from now to the time if ultimately we should choose to deploy, the deployment part would take a different level of talent versus those, uh, um, you know, with regards to just making sure that we have a safe environment, we take the necessary precautions, should our neighbours decide to deploy. So we're really talking about different scenarios. Having said that, we have made some plans to start to train our own core group. We've got uh, uh, nuclear trained scientists, both on EMA as well as within uh, the NEA's perspective and also in academia. And we will continue to work with international bodies. Uh, I've also made the announcement that we recently signed the US-123 agreement with the US. We're working, stepping up engagements with the French and learning from the Idaho National Labs, um, learning from, from uh, the different institutes in, in France, even working with the UK, that would allow us to train, to provide that runway, to train the type of talent that we will need. I hope that gives you that reassurance. Thank you.